Hey all, it's Sammy with Avid CNC, and today we'll be discussing the advantages and best practices of the four most common router bits for machining plywood. This video is one of a three part collaboration, and you'll find two excellent companion videos linked in the description below. There's an In the Labs with Tim Sway on Vectrix channel where you can learn about how to make this sweet plywood guitar tool. And I'd say it works pretty well for CNC technicians too. The third video is on Tim Sway's channel where he makes his own plywood from scratch. All right, let's get started. We're going to focus on when to select a specific bit for a particular operation type. We have down cut, up cut, straight, and compression. These four bits are good choices for machining plywood, and if you're already well versed in router bit selection, you'll likely find that these are always ready to go in your tool tray. First, we'll discuss down cut and up cut router bits. Determining the difference between these two can be difficult at first, so here's a quick method to know which one you have for sure. Hold the bit in front of you, it doesn't matter whether the tip is facing up or down, and follow the flutes with your eyes as they move from left to right. If the flutes curve downward, then it's a down cut bit. If the flutes curve upward as they move from left to right, then you have an up cut bit. Let's take a closer look at down cut bits, or down spiral bits. These bits create a downward pressure which help maintain a smooth surface and preserve the top veneer or surface of the material, making them ideal for machining pockets and recessed areas such as slots or dados. Down cut bits are less ideal for machining smaller diameter holes as the chips are forced downward into the hole, creating friction, trapping heat, and not allowing for proper chip evacuation. Down cut bits are also less desirable during through cuts as they can leave a ragged bottom edge and potentially result in tear out on the bottom veneer, depending on the material. Next we have up cut bits, or up spiral bits. The flutes of an up cut router bit twist in the same direction as a traditional drill bit, which gives them the ability to lift the chips up and away from the material as you're cutting. This is ideal for heat sensitive materials like acrylic, with chips that will potentially melt from the excess heat generated and trapped by a down cut bit. Select an up cut bit when pocketing small diameter holes or other shapes that don't provide as much space for chip evacuation. Do be wary though as it might tear out on the top surface of your material. If you need to create a quarter inch hole and only have a quarter inch cutting tool available, Using a peck drilling operation will further help to ensure the chip removal and reduce the amount of heat created. Up next we have compression bits, or up down cut. The front, or tip of a compression router bit, is an up cut spiral, and the back half is a down cut spiral. Compression bits are a great choice for profile through cuts. By combining both geometries, these bits allow you to achieve a clean cut on the top and bottom surface of the material. The bottom of the material is pulled upward, while the top of the material is pushed downward, thus reducing the risk of damaging either surface. Your feed, speed, and pass step settings are crucial for a clean outcome when using a compression bit. On the first pass of a through cut, be sure to plunge the up cut portion of the bit below the top surface or veneer. Otherwise, the top surface of the material will likely tear out due to the upward pull of the upcut geometry. Using ramps and lead-ins will also help with this. More on that later. Last but not least, we have straight bits. Straight bits are a classic design and provide an economical alternative to more expensive spiral bits. They produce a more neutral effect and don't put either an upward or downward pressure on the top or bottom surface of the material. In choosing a bit for any application, always select one with the shortest cutting edges and the shortest overall length that will reach the required cut depth. Excessive tool length will intensify deflection and vibration, which can degrade cut quality and lead to tool breakage. Here's just a quick review on plunge moves, ramps, and lead-ins, and then we'll get into some machining. A plunge is a vertical Z movement into the material. A ramp is when the bit is driving into the material vertically on the Z axis while simultaneously cutting on the X and or Y direction. 
For down spiral and compression tools, consider using a ramp in your toolpath program. This approach stops the swarf from compressing at the bottom of the tool, causing extreme levels of heat. This heat will damage the cutting edge of the tool and the workpiece. Let's test out these theories and cut out a few samples. First up, compression bit. You can see we've programmed a ramp and a lead-in to minimize the amount of contact the up spiral portion of the bit contacts the perimeter of the part. A lead-in is where a tool plunges into the material outside of the profile and then continues towards the profile to cut around the part. Next we have up cut. Next we have down spiral. If you look closely, you can see that we've programmed a ramp into this toolpath. And lastly, we have the straight cut. Let's go ahead and inspect the cut quality on each of these. On the sample cut by the compression bit, you can see the difference here where the small corner of the part was contacted by the upcut portion of the bit and the stark transition as the bit plunged deep enough for the downcut portion of the bit to be contact with the top veneer for the remainder of the first pass. If we flip it over, the cut quality from the upcut tip of the bit is excellent as well. So when properly programmed, a compression bit will be your best choice for a through cut. The down cut bit left an extremely clean cut on the top surface, but if we flip it over, you can see the Terra on the bottom side. Next, on the sample made by the up cut bit, you can see here that there is quite a bit of Terra on the top surface of the veneer, but it has left a decent cut on the bottom side. The straight bit did a generally decent job on the top and bottom surface and would likely be the best alternative for through cuts in the absence of a compression bit. That's our quick introduction to router bits for machining plywood. Now you can be sure to select the correct router bit for your operation. Be sure to check out the videos on Vectric and Tim Sway's channel for an awesome guitar soul project video so you can put these concepts to the test yourself. You'll also be able to find links to the individual bits as well as our 10-piece router bit set in the description. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the shop.